Well, hi again. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with Devin Knight, who runs our training department at Pragmatic Works. Uh, today we're here on Whiteboard Wednesday to talk about some of the benefits between the tabular model of analysis services and the MOLAP model of analysis services. So, Devin, I, I know we have we've listed off some of the, some of the big things here. Right. Uh, first of all, I guess let's talk about the use case. Uh, let me kind of just draw a quick uh, here. I'll just draw a quick graph right here. And this will be like the size of the size will be the scalability basically. Okay. The higher we go, the more scalability. But down here, we've got a lot of people that a big customer base actually can use this. So let's say these guys right here are going to be the power pivot users. Okay. Who is that really appeal to? From there? Yeah, it's it's a lot of people will have a, the analyst will actually do this. Okay. So business analysts will be able to handle power pivot. In fact, we have a class devoted to BAs for power pivot. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. So we have a class devoted to them. Uh, that's really the intro introductory level to getting into an analytics environment, to having some kind of analytics environment. Uh, like analysis services, multidimensional or tabular, Power Pivot's your first entry point into that. And that's an Excel-based kind of thing. So when we say tabular, really Power Pivot and tabular models are really almost the same thing, aren't they? Yeah. Using a, a, the BISM model behind the scenes, the BI semantic model behind the scenes. Yeah, tabular is basically the server version of Power Pivot. Oh, okay, gotcha. So this has a wide use. So this would be uh, our really using for personal BI, right? Right. So uh, a general user who comes in and they say, I want to build a spreadsheet that does that, that, that analyzes company numbers, uh, maybe like a fiscal user or something like that. I want to see how the company profitability looks like and come back from there. Yeah, and the nice thing about this too is uh, it can connect to really any, just about any kind of data source you can think of. So all these disparate data sources that I have, I can bring together as a business analyst huh. in PowerPivot, as long as I have access to it, of course, and be able to create some analytics off of that very easily with inside of Excel, a tool I'm already very comfortable with. So as you grow that, you want to publish this somewhere. Right. Uh, you don't want to just have all your users kind of just hitting the refresh button and, and wiping and loading your data set. Yeah. So really, where, that's where, you know, in this case, you know, Power Pivot for SharePoint comes in, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the next level up is once I want to share it with other folks or if I actually want to make it more scalable, because obviously I don't want to be running this large Power Pivot workbook and refreshing it on my workstation every day. I want it to actually automatically refresh from a server. And that's where Brian has written here, Power Pivot for SharePoint comes in, where we actually deploy those models out, the Power right. Pivot models out to SharePoint, and it actually leverages analysis services as a back end to do those data refreshes and scale out the resources it needs. And again, that, that, the nice thing about this is you don't have 80 users emailing this 100 meg spreadsheet around. Right. Even though it hyper compresses in, right. in Power Pivot, it's still going to be, you know, if you have a 100 gig, 100, 100 megabyte uh, data warehouse behind the scenes, it's still going to be a 10 meg spreadsheet. Sure, sure. So the, this is more for the department now at this point. Yes. Now our next stage up is really when we get to the server now at this point, and now we're looking at tabular. Now this is basically power pivot, you said, on, on, um, on for the server. server. Yeah. So this is more a corporate BI now. Yeah, it's more of a corporate BI solution. And the nice thing about tabular is you can actually upgrade up that power pivot workbook that you maybe had your business analyst build. Uh -huh. Inside of the tabular development studio, I can actually upgrade that Power Pivot workbook. So I can ah. take that Power Pivot workbook that BA developed and turn it into a full tabular model. That's perfect. So now I'm, as a developer, I'm now in a Visual Studio environment, not an Excel environment. Right. So I can check things in the source control and all those kind of things. And I still have access to all the data sources you were saying a big pro of before. Yep. And now we're getting the extra benefits of the server where we not only get the resources, but we also have the ability to do more security on it, as well as things like partitions. Ah, OK. So almost what's nice about that as well is in the tabular model, I'm using a server's memory, which right. is my own personal server. Uh, Absolutely. Memory. So that takes us to the last piece here, which is going to be MOLAP. And MOLAP is the same kind of model we had in SQL Server, the past SQL version of SQL Server, SQL right. Server 2005, 2008, and so on, even farther back than that. Sure. MOLAP is a multidimensional OLAP. It's a proprietary form to, to analysis services. So it's a really, really fast resource. Now, I listed as far as the most scalable way of of uh, scaling SSAS, sure. analysis services. But it has some cons also. But this is, if you really have a large environment, multi-terabyte kind of environment, well, that probably makes the most sense in some cases. Yeah, and you know, you could also, looking at this, I think about it, you could also rate this not only on scale, but also probably on ease of use to learn. Right. So power pivot's easier to learn as you go up to tabular and multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional will probably be the most difficult to learn out of the stack. Right, so analysis mentioned scalability, you mentioned ease of use. Uh, a BA is used to using Power Pivot already. Right. So transition from that to tabular is a very easy transition. Absolutely. Uh, the nice, you already mentioned Power Pivot can actually be upsized as well. 
Now, what do you mean by write back here? What is, it's a kind of edge use case, isn't it? Yeah, uh, write back's a feature that's only, as of right now, is only available in the multi-dimensional version of analysis services. And basically, this is used often for like budgeting, where I actually want to write back data to the database. So I have the back-end database that's being my, uh, my model underneath my multi-dimensional cube. I can actually, using write back, send data back to the SQL Server database. Ah, so it's much more like, um, uh, like budget planning, those yeah, kind of things. Yeah, uh, exactly. Performance reviews, qu uh, quotas, those kind of things. Now, I put DAX as a big pro on, on the Power Pivot and Tabular side, mainly because it's just so darn easy to use. Yeah. And inside of uh, MOLAP, we have MDX. And MDX, the learning curve on MDX, even though we do have a class, yeah. is very, very tricky. Yep. Uh, DAX is, is like uh, the Excel language meets MDX, mostly Excel, though, which, which the learning curve is very low on that. Yeah, that definitely helps. And, and again, like you mentioned, there are classes out there. In fact, we offer a class on getting, for your, getting familiar with MDX and kind of ramping up on MDX. Well, when it comes to DAX, we also have a class for that as well, but it's not nearly as a big of a learning curve right. for that. Now, the good thing is, uh, I think about Lutu also, is, is DAX is going to be available in MOLAP here soon as well. That's right. Uh, so in a future release, very soon, you will see DAX inside of the MOLAP cube. So that ease of use get, gets transitioned over to the cube. Uh, now, actions are pretty cool. I like these. These are really just uh, a whole bunch of ways we can kind of interact with the data, right? Yeah, uh, the multidimensional version of analysis services has actions that are capable of doing things like jumping to a reporting services report, ah, for example. So kind of closing that loop thing. Yeah, so whole, having the whole loop of BI all come together. And those functionalities, while well, I'm sure they will come in a tabular eventually, as of right now, they're not. Gotcha. Uh, now, we mentioned also PowerView. Now, PowerView is a, is a great way of visualizing data kind of exploring data with your end users, not after that pixel perfect kind of reports, right. but if you just want to look at the data, see pictures of the data, really Power View right now is only available in tabular mode. Yeah, now, that's you correct. You corrected me earlier though on that. Yeah, so actually uh, for the multidimensional version of analysis services, there is a customer preview, a CTP for uh, where you can have multidimensional also against uh, Power View. So you can create Power View uh, reports off of it as well. So that is coming. This advantage on, and on the uh, tabular side is going to go away in a future release. Now, you mentioned difficult relationships. Walk me through what difficult relationships mean to you. Yeah, so difficult relationships here is actually a positive thing for how multidimensional can handle uh, relationships that you have in your database. So things like uh, reference relationships, many-to-many's that you may have. So that's a pretty common scenario where you may have to have a many-to-many -many in your data warehouse design. Uh, it could also handle things like role playing dimensions very ah, well inside so of. That's what I was drawing up here. So I've yeah. got a date dimension right here, and I've got a ship date and, uh, and a bill date here. Right. So I have two foreign keys over to the date, date dimension. What MOLAP will do is it will spawn two kind of mini dimensions. Yep. Wasn't it? Now, and it'll do it automatically for you, so it's yeah. not much effort to do it. And tabular, how do you do that in tabular? Yeah, so tabular has that capability, but it's a little bit more time consuming to do. You have to write some DAX to be able to make it work for you. So it's more of a manual developer kind of thing. Yep. Definitely. Yep. All right, so cool. Now, this is a big, big difference here between the two relation, two, two products. Uh, now, I'll start with this one. You can sure, sure. So, in a tabular model, we're going to start with the data. So, inside a Power Pivot or tabular, we're looking at data. And we're, whether it be from Excel, whether it be from a flat file or a SQL server, we're going to take the data and actually look at it as we're building this model, after building the, the relationships and the right. cube, all that memory. So this is an in-memory process, and this is why we need tabular sometimes versus power pivot, is because you want to look yep. at the data in, on a server, not on, not on my personal desktop. Like yeah, that's right. RAM. That's right. And with analysis services, typically you're having to model out a data mart or a data warehouse first before you're even ready to get into multidimensional environments. So, you model out your traditional, actually kind of like you've drawn here, my date dimension, my fact it's table. Star schema kind of thing. Yeah, traditional star schema is able to handle uh, an analysis services multidimensional very easily. So let's say a customer already has a star schema. They already have a data mart. Which mm -hmm. one of these things would you recommend for them? Yeah, you know, it really depends on their scenario. So they may be wanting to actually bring in external sources as well, and then you're probably leaning more towards tabular. But if they already have a, a traditional data warehouse design, you probably lean more towards multidimensional. Yeah, because all the hard work is done at this point, right? right? All the ETL is done. You've already gone the process of really 80% of the work probably is ETL, right? Yeah, absolutely. So once you have that work done, the tab the uh, MOLAP model, excuse me, is a very simple model. It fits more towards the data warehouse model, right. yeah. Right. Well, if you don't have that data warehouse, you may want to experiment over here. And the great thing is your users are doing a lot of experimentation here in Power Pivot, and you're just kind of upsizing it slowly yep. and picking the right models for them also. Yeah, and that's what I love about this whole scheme of coming from the scheme, this whole start <laughs> of starting in Power Pivot and working your way up to Tabular and MOLAP is it does make it so that a lot of that work is done ahead of time. So that work is done by the BA, and they've already done the analysis of what works and doesn't work before it gets out to you with, you know, hopefully 
full requirements. One thing we didn't run up here also on the MOLAP side is really refreshing your data. Yes. Uh, this is a real big, uh, real nice thing on the MOLAP side. If you want to refresh your data, you can do incrementals, you can just do deltas, you can just take the data that's changed and, 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 and refresh your fact table and your dimensions. However, on the tabular side, it's a lot, a lot more tricky, right? Yeah, it's kind of, there, there's, there's an all or nothing concept to it as well as some other concepts where you can actually dive right into the data source. So there's a lot of new things when it comes to tabular as far as how you can connect the data and the data that you return back to queries. But essentially it's a wipe and load. Yeah, basically it is. Uh, wipe and load a partition at least. Now right. you also have this thing called a direct query. A direct query uh, is basically the equivalent of rollup over Rolap. here. Right. So uh, basically as you drag a, an item over, it will send a query over to SQL Server or Access. Or, oh no, it's only SQL Server. But uh, places like that, I think it's only, only SQL Server. It's only SQL Server, yep. Yeah, right now at least. I'm sure they're going to change that. Uh, so if you, again, one more thing, Devin. If you had hundreds of gigs of data, which one would you lean towards? I'll say they have a terabyte data warehouse. Yeah. And I want to get the whole thing into a queue. Which, which pie makes more sense to you? Art? Yeah, for me, I'm definitely going multidimensional. Model it out first. At that size of a database or that size of data I want to bring in, it makes sense to bring in multidimensional. It can handle those processing patterns where I can process individual partitions, like you mentioned, or even process right. the latest partition if I only need to do that. And that said, tabular is wicked, wicked fast right. because it is, it is all on memory. But on the MOLAP side, it's just going to scale better. So you're going to reach a point where that memory can't hold much more, and you have to, you have to start spooling the disk at that point. And that's when your performance on tabular starts going down. So if you have a if you have a terabyte data warehouse, chances are at MOLAP you're probably what a one to six ratio, one to eight ratio roughly. So yeah. you're probably slightly around a hundred to two hundred gig MOLAP uh, cube based on how you build it. But in tabular, you get like a ninety-five percent compression, ninety percent mm. compression. So you get a really good compression rate there. Well, Devin, is there, uh, tell us about the classes that you offer around this, one, around this as well. Yeah, so we actually have classes at every point in this model that we've talked about. We have a power pivot class for BAs, specifically for BAs. Mm -hmm. We also have a tabular and power pivot course where we talk first do power pivot and building a power pivot workbook and then upgrading it to tabular and what the new things you get with tabular. Mm -hmm. And then we also have several analysis services courses, one on writing MDX, so one that actually walks you through how to, how to write MDX mm -hmm. and specifically for MDX. And we have an introductory class for multidimensional as well as a master's level multidimensional. Oh, okay, the master's one, assuming you already know how to build a cube going from that to right. the much, much higher. More of an now. expert level course. Gotcha. And we also have a SharePoint BI class as well, That's which, right. we're, which is being rewritten right now for 2013. So That's right. some good stuff around that, which would cover the power pivot for SharePoint here as well. So every piece of the stack you have an offering as well as the in-person uh, piece as well for in workshop form. That's right, absolutely. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys for coming today on Whiteboard Wednesday. And Devin, thank you for joining me as well. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you.